Hi everyone, welcome to the Buys and Post Game Show presented by Gate City Bank. I'm Logan Campbell, Jeff Kolpak, Eric Peterson, Kyle Manuel join me today. What a heartbreaker this semifinal FCS matchup was in Missoula as NDSU falls to Montana 31 to 29 in double overtime. You've been covering this team for how many years? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, a couple. <laughs> Where does this one stack up? You know, in all the games. I'm supposed to be a writer, so I'm supposed to have the words for stuff like this. I'm not sure I have the words for what I saw today. Drama, excitement, just all the implications, the trip to Frisco. Um, this is the third time I've covered the Bison and Washington Grizzly. The first one was 2002 when the Division II Bison upset uh, uh, Montana. 2015 was a season opener when uh, Montana scored late to win 38-35, but this topped them all. I mean, this was just such a back and forth crazy game. I think Bobby Howe called the road. He, words. He called it one of the greatest games played in the stadium. He did. He, yeah. did, he did call it the greatest yeah. game played in the stadium in the post game. Well, this is how football should be. NDSU is now 1-5 playing in Missoula. We talked about this team and just the journey that NDSU has had this postseason postseason even in the regular season they lost to South Dakota lost to UND people were wondering would they even make it this far what oh. impressed you with how the Bison were able to rally today what impressed me was their grit I think NDSU was successful moving the ball at times early I don't think they're necessarily sharp I think the crowd got to them we saw five false starts that turns third and twos to third and sevens but a fake I mean Cam Miller took so many hits today Eli Green was made some amazing catches. As a star. Yeah. Their, yes. their running backs ran. I, I don't think NDSU could have played harder today. They maybe could have played cleaner, but just the grit of this team, when, when after the junior Bergen returned the punt and it looked like everything was against them, the 26,544 fans in here were just going wild. NDSU could have mailed it in there, but they, they pull a fake punt out, leads to a, a an Eli Green touchdown late regulation. Then NDSU scores on the first play of overtime, mm -hmm. and then you're thinking they have a slight edge, but that's just the way this game was. It was two really quality teams going back and forth. And I, I just think, I think grit is kind of the, the legacy of this team. At times they didn't play the cleanest football, but you know, after that UND loss midseason 49-24, this, this team found a way to win a lot of games and, and they just seemed to play a little bit better as they, you know, progress through the season. I want to talk about Eli Green because he is such a fun player to watch. Kyle and I talked before the season. We said he was going to be a breakout star. What a player he has become. Oh, wow, you guys called it, huh? We did, oh, yeah. You yeah. It was pretty Woo! easy, right? <laughs> you saw the flashes a year ago, yeah. right? You saw it in the national championship. It was like, okay, if this guy can figure it out, if they can get the ball into his hands. And then Zach Mathis goes down, right? And so it's and it, not that that was the reason he stepped up today because he's been doing it all all season, really, but really in this back half. And, and you know, it's, it's funny. You watched his – when he – it's – now that I'm not doing color, I'm not like I can just watch him run routes, and it's amazing. Like yeah. his speed, his athleticism, the way he goes up and gets balls. Um, it's just, it, it's it's sad to see that we won't get to see that again um, until next year, hopefully. But it's um, it's it's been fun to see his growth, and I know Cam Miller's talked about that and his ability to just go up and make plays one on one. Well, he makes the ridiculous catches. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't make just the routine. I mean, the only catch he didn't make today it was like an acrobatic one-handed <laughs> stab in the end zone <laughs> that was behind him. But if you want, I think if you want to boil it down, why? I mean, obviously there's a lot of things, but what hurt NDSU today was three field goals. They finally scored a touchdown late in regulation, but they they drove the ball pretty well early in the game, but settling for three field goals. And Matt Ent said it, you just can't settle for field goals in a game like this. At Montana State, they didn't settle for field goals. In Vermilion, they didn't settle for field goals. NDSU settled for field goals today a lot early in the game, and I think in the end that's probably what caught up with them the most. Penalties as well were a killer for NDSU. Before we talk about what the offseason may hold, because we know mm -hmm. it'll be a little bit busier than normal, how would you describe this season for NDSU? Well, it's it's a tough ending as I see this goalpost over here that's dismantled. <laughs> Probably the uprights are in some bar by now. Well, Bobby Halp was hoping they'd he make their way yeah. downtown. Was mm -hmm. what he said. Uh, I, I think I, I think you guys hit it on the head. I, I just think this team started slow, had some issues defensively. They lost all their defensive backs virtually from last year. Ended up leading the country in interception. I thought it was a really well coached job yes. this year. I thought you know with, with the head coach and then this week with all that's going on, the, the players I think took control. Pretty good leadership. You don't get here and, and, and recover from the season that they did with the start that they had without good leadership. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, I, the grits comes to mind. I, I think that's a good word. And, and NDSU had its moments, but Coach Matt N said after the game, if you'd have told me this team would have given them 16 points, yeah, they missed a tackle yeah. here too. But Montana had some very good athletes on offense, Junior Bergen being one of them. But 
it's just one of those games where NDSU just had opportunities earlier to maybe turn threes into sevens, and I think in yeah, the now, end, now they know the, how the other half lives. How many times have <laughs> you seen teams at the dome cut in a crowd like this? Right. I mean, we saw it for so many years, and th and now you're you're getting the, the visiting team treatment. And, and so to the speak. false starts almost created turnovers. I, yeah. I think NDSU was in uh, Grizz territory, third and two, back to back false starts, and it's all of a sudden it's third and twelve. Like you turn. Third and two, you have your, you know, how many plays can you run in third and two? Your third and 12, it kind of limits what you can do. And it just, it just happened too much at just the wrong time for NDSU. They, they did a lot of good things offensively, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. early in this ball game and they were moving the ball and we saw it on that opening drive, obviously the field goals. Mm -hmm. Logan mentioned the penalties. It just seemed like to me, and I don't know how you quantify this, but it seemed like one of those games were like, and I know it wasn't every little thing, but the little thing, I think I said this to you guys in the press box, it just seemed like the little things were going Montana's way. Yes. And it almost seemed like, it was almost like a fitting ending the way that it ended. Just like one, it was going to yeah. come down to one play, and that's exactly what it did. And I know fans are going to be disappointed, and there's different things you can nitpick in this, but like, as an alumni, as someone who played here, if you're a fan, like, you should be proud of this team. I mean, I know you're, you're disappointed the way this ended, but I just look at it and the way the UND game went, the way that, that could have fractured the locker room, how they came together, they talk about the love and everything. Obviously, Coach Enns talked about that. It's just, I mean, you're disappointed today, yeah. but I'm proud of this team. Well, even, I, I was going to go say, ahead. even the two-point conversion, and NDSU had it defended really well, but Junior Bergen's athletic. Yeah. He forces a face mask, and he that said in the, the post game, talking, yeah, he, yeah, he just yeah. he just said I threw it up because I knew we had a free play, and it gets tipped by a guy, went over a guy. Keelan White catches it in the end zone, and then NDSU's has a rollout it almost looked like the same play because Raja Nelson's out in the corner and he was trying to get to stuffle and it just it just it just didn't materialize for NDSU. Yeah. Matt Entz and Cam Miller both describing this season as unique and they said that all the adversity they faced was more than normal but it brought this group so close together both of them said that this is the closest group that they have coached and that they've been a part of so you know a lot to be proud of if you're an NDSU fan. Okay so are we good talking about this season? Yes. Yeah, We're good? Well, yes. well the off season's a whole new season yeah, now. Well, <laughs> we'll touch on that. Um, Obviously, the news broke earlier this week that Matt Entz will be leaving NDSU. He'll be taking a linebacker's coach position at USC. We're hearing that tomorrow or Monday might be the day that NDSU announces a new head coach. What can we look forward to during this offseason? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a new regime. It's a, it's a, it's a new general. Uh, whether it's, you know, Tim Palasek, Tyler Roll, I think generally those are the two that are mentioned the most. Um, the sooner the better. Signing day is Wednesday. I would anticipate something tomorrow or Monday, I would imagine. Yep. Well, not only signing day, just the way the portal is. Yeah. And I, I mean, this is going to be a dynamic, not just for NDSU, but so many teams, are, their NILs are like organized. Now, in the past, I think guys would just go into the portal and hope they found a landing spot. Mm -hmm. Now people kind of know where they're landing when they go in there. So it's just, it's just a whole new ball game. Maybe it's fitting that Matt Entz is moving on to a new job because I think it's this is a new era of college football and, and maybe NDSU, you know, it's good to get a new, you know, voice yep. in the room yep. to lead this program. Okay. Well, and the transfer portal is now the new norm of college athletics. Uh, Kyle, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts. You went through a coaching change. You are, were a player for this program. And this next head coach, what are some of the qualities that you would like to see? Oh, great question. <laughs> uh, look, I mean, I think... I love the the tie to NDSU. I think I don't know. I don't want to say that's the easiest route, but someone who understands. Like, you talk about this place being different, and it's like I don't know if you can really understand that unless you've you've been here, you've played here, whatever, you've coached here before, you've you've understood the culture. But I think Matt Ann said it, like he said, you know, it's about the players, and it's and I've you know, Coach Bull said this when he left. I've heard a bunch of people say this like. NDSU is not, it's not just, it's not one coach, it's not one player, players come and go, coaches come and go, it's its about the program and it's about the tradition and, and buying into the standard that he talked about, I think that's the thing that, that's made NDSU different from all these other FCS schools, all the, all the, the, the success, the national championships, so you hold yourself to a different standard and you're going to play a, a, the game that way, you're going to practice that way, you're going to go to the weight room that way. And, that's what the next head coach has to understand. And obviously the two names that you mentioned, both of those guys, they get it. Mm -hmm, definitely. So we'll be a busy off season and we'll be sure to give you guys all the updates throughout the entire post season. Um, so guys, great season. 
What Thanks, do we Logan. think? I'm tired, yeah. too. I don't know the team's tired. I think yeah. I'm tired as well. <laughs> We're tired, too. Well, I, know. I, I appreciate your hard edge throughout the season, Logan. Oh, you had, yeah. like, a laser focus, and you leveraged your strength. So. Thanks, Eric. Yes, Appreciate no problem. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching the Bison Post Game Show presented by Gate City Bank all season long. So, NDSU season comes to an end in the semifinals of the FCS playoffs as they fall 31 to 29 to Montana in double overtime. So, for Jeff Kopak, Eric Peterson, and Kyle Emanuel, I'm Logan Campbell. Thank you guys so much for watching the Bison Post Game Show presented by Gate City Bank. Good night. <laughs>